Hi, my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. I produce the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and the Bias Plus Reports. And this is Ben and Barry on football. What's going on out there, everybody? This is Ben Dickerson, your co-host. Week one of the preseason is done, and some questions have popped up about certain teams, certain players. So uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to get into one of those subjects that's cropped up lately, which is some of the competitions specifically quarterback competitions going on on certain teams? Quarterback competitions. About how many teams is it that really have a competition right now? They have a real competition? Yeah. Because there's some competitions that aren't real competitions. <laughs> yeah, so, tell me about <laughs> it. <laughs> so I would say a real competition we might be looking at mm, one – <laughs> well, one. One. one and how many competitions if you don't if you include the fake ones the no it, well they're not fake some some well you have to let me do my thing man. go ahead and i'll explain to you what i'm what's going on to be honest with you there are t there were as of yesterday two true competitions Okay. that I believe to be true competitions. Okay. That is now one because one of them has been set, uh, settled. It was settled right. yesterday. And an announcement was made. So that took care of one of them. So, But there's still competition going on, and I'll explain to you why. So the first team I'm going to talk about is your beloved San Francisco 49ers. Now, what's going on with the 49ers is Brock Purdy is coming off a UCL surgery on his throwing elbow. Uh, that's an injury that he sustained in the NFC Championship game versus Philadelphia last season. He's been cleared to practice, and he's been working really hard toward being ready for week number one, and the prognosticators are saying he should be well and ready to go by week number one of the regular season. Now, as long as he's healthy and he's ready to go, then the Niners have indicated he's going to be their starter. The real competition here is between Trey Lance who was drafted number one, number three overall in 2021, and Sam Darnold, who also was drafted number three overall back in 2018. And their competition is for the backup role behind Brock Purdy. So the essence, there is still a competition going on. And it has had, uh, uh, Darnold's had an up and down season, uh, career rather, I'm sorry, not season, has had an up and down career after being uh, drafted by the Jets, being on that team for a couple of years, and then ended up on the Panthers, playing there for a little while last year. So now the Niners have picked him up in free agency during the offseason, and he is vying for that second spot. The funny thing is, the word out of training camp indicates that Darnold is well, well ahead of Lance in the battle for the number two spot. And in the preseason game against the Raiders last weekend, to me, Darnold was clearly better. Now, the word is Lance may be competing at this point for the number three spot with Brandon Allen. That's not good for Trey Lance. What do you think about that? I'm not going to go too deep into it because, you know, I've been looking at this from a number of different perspectives and probably we'll talk a little bit more about it uh, later on. Um, it's the, the fact that he brought Darnold in, who comes in with a wealth of experience compared to Trey Lance, to me, it was like saying, okay, Darnold, you're going to be the backup because you don't bring a guy like Darnold in to be a third stringer behind a guy who doesn't have, you know, a tenth of the experience. That doesn't make sense to me. So, you know, I, I would expect that, um, you know, that Trey, as soon as they brought Donald in, was really relegated to the third string. But I've heard people and I've read re reports that basically said they brought him in to back up Trey Lance. That, you know, so I don't know what the hell Kyle Shanahan is really doing as far as the quarterbacks are concerned. Um, as I said to you, when we talked about Trey Lance coming in, it looked to me as if I'm going to say Kyle Shanahan 
had an idea of what he wanted to do with Trey Lance that was different than what he was doing on a normal basis. Because on a normal basis, his offense didn't run options and things of that nature. And then as soon as he went and got Trey Lance, all of a sudden that became a part of the offense. So I don't really know what he's doing. And I don't think it's helping Trey that, that he's, that he's doing what he's doing. If you're a, a, a Sam Darnold, if you're even a, a Brock Purdy and you can, you know, you're, you're comfortable in that, you know, um, more pocket centered role and, you know, handing off and doing all the little trickery stuff that Kyle Shanahan likes to do, you should be able to function just like Garoppolo did in, in this, in this offense that Trey Lance is not looking comfortable. I think is, is, is partially, uh, well, I think it partially was a problem with his line in, in that preseason. He had no time. It was just up in his face right away. And I don't think he was quite ready for that. So I'm glad they kind of, they let him play through it. They took him out. Darnold went in there. He faced pressure a lot better. He's got a lot more experience with that. Even when I looked at a lot of the other quarterbacks, I was surprised at a lot of the throws. It was like the coach said, throw it here. And they threw it there, whether he was open or not. I saw a lot of that kind of stuff. So I guess these guys are fighting for a, a job. They're trying to get in the NFL and the, the, the overwhelming weight of doing what the, the coach said do, you know, it is really, I think, kind of screwing some of these guys up. But we'll see as we go through week two and week three, we'll, we'll see if there's any maturation, if the coordinators are making, you know, some eat some better decisions in terms of the stuff that they're giving them to do. And we'll see even if Trey Lance gets an opportunity to to um, to do any better. You said Brandon Allen behind him. Brandon Allen's been there. Yep. So, you know, hey, if Brandon Allen can step up and do the job, you know, if he fits that system a little bit better, he doesn't have to make, you know, his the mental adjustments. But, you know, we'll see. You'll see at this particular point. So uh, competition, we're not talking for the starting position. That was for the backup position. That's well, a true competition, yes. Who else you got? Okay, so next I'd like to talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> <laughs> got a Buccaneers fan here who's all excited already. So I'm going to tell you right now, it looks to me like Baker Mayfield is going to be the guy, and I believe most of the people on TV are saying they believe Baker Mayfield is going to be the guy. Uh, word out camp is that Kyle Trask has performed pretty well, though. He was a second-round pick by the Buccaneers in 2021, and he did share a quarterback room for a couple of years with Tom Brady. So that's a big plus for him. Um, however, Baker showed last season when he was with the Rams that with some protection and some decent targets, he can still sling it. So now he has real weapons in Chris Godwin and Mike Evans they should have a decent running game as they usually do, although I heard the guy they were expecting to be the number one running back sustained a little injury in camp. I'm not exactly sure how serious it is. Uh, Trask's only chance, as far as I can see it, is if he's pretty spectacular during these next two preseason games and the time he gets in those games. If he plays extremely well and does some really extremely good things, this could make it tough for Tampa Bay to make a decision. But I don't see that happen. I think Baker Mayfield's pretty much got it locked up. This is my question. Mm -hmm. Why would you bring a Baker Mayfield in and then put him in a competition with a guy who you obviously didn't think was ready to be the starter or you wouldn't have brought Baker Mayfield in in the first place? I mean, to me, it's like you bring Baker Mayfield in because you feel comfortable that he can run your offense. That's why you bring a Baker Mayfield in, not to compete with a Kyle Trask. You know, if, if you thought Kyle Trask could run your offense, you wouldn't need Baker Mayfield. So to me, that whole th – this is a fake competition. I don't even know why they're faking it. It doesn't make sense to me at all. I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree no. with anything you just said. First of all, Kyle Trask – because he's played behind Tom Brady, hasn't had an opportunity. He's sort of kind of like Trey Lance, only actually worse because he hasn't had a chance to play in any real meaningful uh, situations, i.e. Uh, uh, regular season games. But that's not 
a detriment. Well, it is a detriment to him as far as, <laughs> yes, experience, it is. <laughs> as far as experience is concerned. However, he's been around. He's been in the system. He's gotten reps and he's worked with Tom Brady. He's worked with the offensive coordinators, the coaches and all that. But knowing that a guy like that can just be ready to take over. No NFL team does that. Who, who just hands the keys to the guy and lets him go with that little bit of experience? Nobody. Not even Washington commanders who claimed right after the season was over that Sam Howell was their guy. And this guy, and he has more playing time in real games than Kyle Trask does too. But they so still saying, are. Are you saying Kyle Trask is not ready? No, I'm not saying that at all. So should but the Buccaneers men, at this point know whether Kyle Trask is if ready they or thought not? If should they, they have thought, an idea? If they thought he was ready or they believed that he could be ready, should they just go with him and not have anybody else to rely on if it doesn't work out? Let, you know, you're talking about professional football coaches and GMs, okay? Right. They've watched Kyle Trask for how many years now? Well, you had an opinion. Give me your opinion. I'm, just, I'm saying. I've already your given you my opinion. Was, my opinion he... was Kyle Trask is not ready to start. You bring Baker Mayfield in because he's going to be your starter. But you don't have to put up a fake uh, a competition like hey, he has to compete with Kyle Trask for the starting position. You already told me by bringing Maker, Baker Mayfield in that Kyle Trask is not ready to be your starter. I don't agree with that. I don't think they knew 100% that Baker Mayfield was just going to step foot on the field and take over their offense and master it. He hasn't been great either. He hasn't had great preseason game yet. He you hasn't looked really, wonderful. You really think they they had that that little faith that Baker Mayfield could come in and be a starter? Why is it little faith? Suppose they, they had a they, they're, they're com making them compete with a guy who you say is obviously doesn't have really enough experience to be ready, and then you're acting like he's going to compete with that guy. Now, Kyle Trask, you have to put him in a competition situation, so you do know. How will you ever know? If, if Baker you Mayfield if, is if not, you've Tom been Brady. watching Baker Mayfield for Baker the last Mayfield how many is years, five, Brady, six bro. years, and Baker you still Mayfield don't... is right here. Tom Brady's way up there. So you don't treat Kyle Trask with Baker Mayfield the same way you treated Kyle Trask with Tom Brady. Baker Mayfield is not Tom Brady. I'm just so saying, as far as I'm Kyle concerned, Trask, and yes, we disagree. As far as I'm concerned, if you're going to bring Baker Mayfield in, you're bringing him because you have confidence he can start for your team. That's why you that's bring a Baker Mayfield in. That's part of it. Because of the experience that he's had, he should be able to do that. However, you need to find out what you have in Kyle Trask. You don't just find out what you have in Kyle Damn. Trask by throwing Damn. him out there. You can put you know, him. You don't Damn. do that. That's what you got you preseason. That. That's what you got all this practice and stuff for. And he's doing that. Like he's the backup. He's doing just, that. He's the backup. Understand something. Baker Baker's Mayfield has not he's won the, the job yet, Barry. You can play the heck out of him. Barry, got Baker Mayfield has games. not won the job. Baker Mayfield has not been named the number one quarterback yet. I know. That's because okay. they got this so, silly so coach in them so playing they this competition knew. thing. So that's, it's a fake that makes no sense to me at all. So uh, I'm explaining to you what sense it makes to me. Well, you, you you think it makes sense, and I'm telling you it don't. So, okay, <laughs> there we go. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is the Indianapolis Colts. Now, head coach Shane Steichen brought quarterback Gardner Minshew another friend of yours, with him over from the Eagles where he was the OC at the time and Minshew was the backup for Jalen Hurts. The Colts drafted Anthony Richardson out of Florida at the number four pick overall. And after building and nurturing and executing a very successful offense around Jalen Hurts, I believe that Steichen plans to do the same thing with Richardson. Richardson is actually bigger and probably stronger and looks even a little bit more athletic than Jalen Hurts is. So I know Steichen's got a lot of big plans for this guy. Now, the early word out of camp was Minshew was a safe bet to start the season until Richardson handled more preseason games and practice reps and was able to prove that he understood the playbook and all that stuff. Kind of like the same situation with the team that we just got finished talking about. So it seemed like well, we know we have Gardner Minshew. We know he can run that offense. 
because he's been under that coach before. So that's a given. So there's no need to rush Richardson because he's a rookie and we don't know if he can handle it. But guess what? They just named the rookie the starting quarterback yesterday. Steichen's made the announcement that Richardson was his guy and he would be the regular season week one starter. Just like that. And there's no way in high heaven that they know if Richardson's ready for it or not. But they brought Minshew in to give him some competition, to keep things rolling and have him so have something to play for and get himself ready for. And that's what they've been doing. And they've seen enough. They think they can bring him along and get the job done. There's no doubt Richardson is the quarterback that the Colts need and want for their immediate future and beyond. But there's no need, as far as I'm concerned, to rush him if you have a quarterback not only that has experience, but has specific experience with the head coach and the type of offense that coach tries to run. Not like a guy like Baker Mayfield has been here, there, and everything. This is a specific quarterback with specific knowledge about specific playbook and a specific head coach knows exactly what this guy wants. But instead, the competition led Richardson to rise to the occasion, and he has been named the starting quarterback. And I agree with that decision. You actually agree with Derry's decision? Yes, I do. It's interesting. It sounded, in all of the evidence you was putting forward, I was really thinking you were not – me, well, I gave the evidence years. that you would have given that you just gave for the other guy. Is oh, that what it is? <laughs> That's exactly what but it is. But guess what? But guess what? You know what I like about it? The decisiveness. I like the decisiveness, you know? They've seen enough. They've been through all of the camp and all of that kind of stuff. And they're like, you know, we're going to play, put our cards on the table and we're going to go with this. And, you know, we think we know what we're doing. I like that, you know? So he'll get a, he'll get the kind of reps that he needs, you know, to be the starter they know what Minshew can do. He don't need a lot of reps. You just want to make sure that uh, Richardson stays healthy and gets, you know, through it. So you're probably not going to beat him up too much during the preseason. So I like the decisiveness of that. So I, I for, for probably different reasons, we both agree that we like this particular move by the, uh, all right. The Colts. Okay. So next up, we have the Washington Commanders. It's another interesting one. During the offseason, Commander's head coach, Ron Rivera. In fact, as soon as last season ended, I remember Coach Ron Rivera having a press conference and stating several times that Sam Howell was QB1 going into the 2023 season. New OC, Eric Bieniemy started Howell and the rest of the Washington number ones last weekend in their preseason game against the Browns. Start the whole first unit. The first two series of the game were a total mess for Washington. Drop passes, a whole bunch of holding calls, the offensive line jumping off sides, all kind of crazy stuff. They could never get a series done right. Obviously upset, the enemy left them out there almost for the rest of the quarter. But on the third series, Howell was finally able to put together an 80-yard scoring drive. He went 9 of 12 for 77 yards and finished the drive with a 26-yard touchdown pass to Jahan Dotson, which was a really brilliant catch and nice run and bullied his way into the end zone. Of course, as committed as Rivera and Biennemi seemed to be with Howell, the commanders did bring in Jacoby Brissett. Why? Because everybody hedges their bets a little bit, no matter how sure they are, to make sure that this guy doesn't take things for granted. Everybody needs some competition. Everybody. And I believe that was a wide choice bringing in Jacoby Brissett. He's played for multiple teams and in multiple systems. He's been a starter, and he's more than a competent backup if they need him to be that, and he can start if they need him to be that. Uh, he did, in fact, start 11 games last year for the Browns. Uh, he was 4-7. and seven. The Browns didn't start off the season very well. Didn't have a whole lot to do with him. He was defense mostly. But all that being said, I believe Sam Howell is going to be their guy. Yeah, he's going to be their guy. You know, do you believe this is a, a true competition? No. No, me neither. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> I mean, they're competing as far as reps, 
looking at them doing the drills and stuff like that. Okay. But there's, you know, I mean, everybody's human, man. There's one thing to hand something to somebody who hasn't been around maybe but for a year or two or three or four, as opposed to saying, Hey, we're going to bring this guy in just in case Then you're like, just in case what I'm the guy, I should be the guy. So you get out there on the practice field and you prove it. People well, you know, don't have anything to prove. People that don't have anything to prove or feel like they don't have anything to prove don't necessarily uh, function the same way that people do have something to prove do. Well, th this whole concept of something to prove versus whether this is a competition or not, I would have some question because I believe these guys are professional and they don't need to be put in a fake competition for them to be putting their best foot forward. I think these guys are out there trying to trying their best. And all you really got to do is is have seen them and know enough about this player to say, OK, Jacoby Brissett is not our starter. If we were going to make Jacoby Brissett our starter, he'd be our starter. And we'd bring him in and say, we've seen Jacoby Brissett for the last how many years he got in the league, Ben? I don't know, about seven. About seven. We've seen him for seven years. And we think that he can start for the Washington command. But you football. can't do that because he hasn't played in that system even though he has shown that he can easily understand different systems and has played in different systems, they feel secure that he can come in and learn this one. Okay. But he still has to compete. When I say compete, I don't mean like they're running a race. Okay. Compete means you have to go through everything that everybody else is going through at your position and do it to the best of your ability. And then we'll make a decision. So even though, you know, we already probably have made the decision about which person we really want. And everybody knows who they want to be the starter. They have to make sure that Jacoby Brissett can at least do what he has to do if, in fact, they have to play him. That's Let's part of the competition, practice. too. Let's go practice. Okay, bro. <laughs> That's all that. Let's practice. Okay. <laughs> you know, you don't have to. <laughs> competition it's a competition uh, come on it's practice you know you already said he don't know the system you're bringing him in you're not bringing him in to be the starter which means the other guy's the starter <laughs> you know it's kind of like okay you know you're playing with my mind and you know it, but it's interesting uh, um what you were saying about the offense being a mess i know um the enemy has been somewhat at odds, you know, they, with the team. They were they were having some issues, and he's you know he's a stickler. He wants them to be and wants it to be right, and what he's trying to do. I don't know exactly what he's trying to do, but the question is, do they? You know, uh, is is what he's doing going to be effective for this team? You know, and we're waiting to see because we talked about the brain trust, you know. And we talked about the new the new coordinators and stuff. So when you ranked them, those new guys weren't that highly ranked because we had to give them a year to see, you know, how they were going to uh, um, be able to perform, you know. But you know, so that's the question with with uh, uh, Eric Bieniemy. How is you know is, as, as the uh, offensive coordinator with no Andy Reid built in, you know, to this system. Uh, and um, as you know, I'm not a real big fan of you know um Ron Rivera as far as being especially as far as offensive mind is concerned so I think Eric Bieniemy is kind of on his own you know this is an Eric Bieniemy show so it's going to be interesting to see uh what happens with that so okay who's up next uh, we haven't had good arguments like this in a while well it's not really a good argument because you don't have one. Oh, <laughs> so, <yes I> do. <laughs> go ahead next up we have the Tennessee Titans. Now, this one's interesting. Barring injury, veteran Ryan Tannehill will start the season for the Titans. However, the battle here is for the number two spot, which is very, very important on this team. Since Tannehill was banged up last year, missed five games with injury, and ended the season on IR. So not only are they battling for the number two spot, but they're battling because the number two spot means if something happens to Tannehill, you have to be ready to take over. All right, so 2021 third round pick Malik Willis actually played in the regular season last year when Tannehill got hurt. He was one and two in three games that he started, and he played in eight games overall, kind of in relief 
uh, when Tannehill got banged up or whatever, he had to come in for a couple of plays or finish the game. Uh, he looked pretty bad. But he was a rookie. He didn't have a great camp. He didn't have great preseason games. I don't think they expected much out of him. And when the situation arose, they had to stick him in there, and he looked pretty bad. However, the word out of camp is he's showing a very good amount of improvement. Now, I didn't get a chance to watch much of their preseason game number one, but I will definitely tune in for preseason game number two because last year's second-round pick, Will Levis, is also said to be improving and playing pretty well in practice. Now, this week, the Titans have joint practices and a preseason game against the Vikings. So we got – I'll be listening out for word out of camp with the uh, joint practices with the Vikings, and I will definitely tune in for the preseason game number two uh, against the Vikings so I can watch these guys kind of battle it out. I don't think Tannehill's going to play – probably not play any uh, preseason games at all. So this competition will go on to see who's going to be the primary backup. Now, both guys will have a chance to distinct, distinguish themselves in these next two games. And uh, right now, Willis is named as the number two on the depth chart, but that can change at any time. Um, I really can't call this one. This one's up in the air for me. I, I don't know who I prefer in this one. So, again, I'm going to have to watch the next game, and then maybe I can decide, or maybe I may have to watch the next two games and try to decide. Um, un unless uh, Vrabel decides to announce one guy, but we'll have to wait and see. We think about that with the Titans situation. Looks like a real competition, you know, and, and a necessary one because, you know, Malik Willis has been there, but he hasn't necessarily shown to be the starter per se, you know, and then you, you bring in Will Levis, who they expected to be a high first round, he drops to the second, but he still came in uh, with a lot of moxie, with a strong arm, you know, a decent background. And he looks like he, him and Malik Willis, there's not a lot of separation, you know, that from what I've seen. So I, I'd really like to see the rest of the preseason to see those two guys go at it. I think that's going to be one of the more interesting uh, battles, you know, that we can watch in the NFL. Okay, so now the next two teams I'm going to mention really don't have any real competition going on. But I want to talk about them because they are the number one and number two picks overall. Because they are the number one and number two picks overall, when that happens with a quarterback position, teams expect these guys, guys to come right in and be ready. Excuse me, right off the bat. We're bringing you in to be the starter on our team. That's why we picked you so high. And this is what's going on. So the Carolina Panthers selected Bryce Young number one overall. And they'll do everything in their power to have him ready to be QB1 right off the bat. Now, they brought in free agent veteran Andy Dalton to be his mentor, to be in the QB room with him, to go over film with him, teach him how to be a, uh, a professional and all that good stuff. And also, because Andy Dalton's a veteran, he's been around and he was a starter for many, many years. They expect him to be ready to step in if anything goes wrong with Bryce Young. The Houston Texans used the second overall pick to select C.J. Stroud. Same situation here. When the quarterback gets picked that high, they expect this guy to be ready. And they're going to do everything they can do to have him ready to hit the ground running come the regular season. His backup is last year's starter, Davis Mills, who they know has been running that offense and hasn't really been problematic. The whole team's kind of problematic but they're trying to turn things around with C.J. Stroud, and they know they can go to Davis Mills if, in fact, they have to. But there's no competition there. That high draft pick has to pay off for that. Absolutely, in both cases, in both cases. And to me, this looks like a trend of bringing in these more experienced quarterbacks uh, to back up these high draft picks or these, these rookies that you want to try to get you know some work in and want to try to get them to start. Um, I think it's going to be interesting when we do our best jobs in the NFL backup quarterbacks, because I think we're going to see a lot more experience. Um, and it's already a high, highly experienced position because we've seen so many of these backups got five, 10 years in the league, not necessarily starting. But now we're going to add the starting experience to that long experience level. So I'm kind of excited about getting to that point. But like I said, I wanted to wait 
because some of these battles are still not settled. We still don't know who the number two is, you know, and that's, that's going to be fun, man. But I, I, I really want to see what Malik, Malik Willis and Will Levis, um, you know, how they battle that out because that that's, they're, they're kind of close. I think they're kind of close. So maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll shall see on that. Is that it? That's it. That's it, man. Let me tell you something. Competition, lack of competition, you know, it's all, you know, it's all what they say it is. We have to listen, man, and believe it or not believe it. That That's part of it. Hey, Ben, as we yes. move on to the other portion of our show where we look at our Facebook page, I just wanted to mention, what was it last week or so, we were talking about some of our favorite female sportscasters. Yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, I had talked about Mina Kynes. You know? Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, I have a new one. Already? Already. <laughs> and and thanks to you and your fantasy. Oh, she was on last night. Stefania Bell. Stefania Bell. Now, you know her background? Yeah, I looked it up, man. She's the medical expert, man. She's, She's the one they go to when guys get injured. They go right to her. Well, I'm like, and she's a rabbit niner fan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she had so right right there, she had to be brought on. She's like one of my favorites now. So uh she just did a thing. Um but she knows her stuff too. She's not just the medical person, she knows her stuff. She yeah, she's been apparently. playing fantasy for years. So she knows the players, she knows the game. That's awesome. That's awesome. She just did a, a special on uh, ESPN. Talking about um, one of the coaches. I think it was a Seattle coach who was involved in helping a three-year-old who um, they found in a pool, unresponsive, and pulled him out the pool. And he was part of the rescue team. Raheem Morris was part of the rescue team that saved this three-year-old kid. Um, and they had just been trained. At his house? This was at a pool someplace, okay? Okay. But, he had, but the Seahawks had just sponsored this medical training on this okay. first response stuff, you know? Okay. okay. And so he was part of, like, when they when they pulled the kid out and they were doing CPR and everything, and apparently there's this machine that shocks them back and forth. And so they yeah. were like, you know, when he came over, the doctor was, like, um, you know, trying to give him CPR. He said, he's, and he asked, where's the AD machine or whatever that the machine AED. is? There you go. AED, yeah. So, and they were like, it's there. So he like hauled over to the place, got the machine, brought it back, and they were able to use Raheem? it. Raheem? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, And they cool. saved the okay. little boy. Oh, that's great. They saved the little boy, and they had to, they showed the little boy coming back to the stadium and getting yeah, the Yeah, 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 you know? yeah. So, Raheem yeah. Mars, defensive coordinator. Right, exactly. Yes, exactly. yes, yes, yes. So, you know, I don't know, Benny, maybe me and you have to go through this training. You might have to go, you know. I did it a couple of times, but, you know, if you never have to save anybody, you kind of. Yeah. Uh, if I was in if I was in a situation, I think I could probably do it. But it's been a while since I had the training. We had the little yeah. dummies and you had to do the compression. Yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of stuff. All that, yeah. But the new machine that you're talking about, I'm not aware of, you know. Oh, I well, it's basically like, it's like the paddles. Okay. You know, you put them on clear. <laughs> 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 that joke, <job, yeah. laughs> All right. So, Stefania Bell. I'm, I'm liking her already. Okay, Benny, so um, let's get to the current events and hot topics portion of the show where we will be going to the Ben and Barry on Facebook page and talking about some of the things that are going on across the NFL. Again, Ben and Barry on Facebook at BNBOF. Come visit us, join up, and let's talk football online. All right, Benny. We'll just go through this kind of stream of consciousness here and let's respond to whatever we want to respond to. What do you think about this Patriot signing of Ezekiel Elliott? I think it's great. Do you? Yes, I do. Why? Uh, you didn't read my comment. You put strange up there, right? Strange pickup. Yeah. No, I didn't strange see a comment. Pickup. Okay. So first of all, everybody thinks Zeke is washed. He's not washed, okay? However, 
He no longer has the chops to be a lead back. He's been a, cow, a bell cow his entire career. He can't do that anymore. He can't tote the rock 300 plus times over the course of a season anymore. But a short yardage and goal line guy, he still can be. Especially if he worked hard over the offseason, which he usually does and comes into camp in pretty good shape, which I believe he has done. He's good in short yardage. He's a good goal line back. He can catch the ball out of backfield still. The hands are the last thing to go. And he's been a top-notch pass protector his entire career. Top-notch. When you, when, when you talk to the quarterbacks around the league about backs that protect them in passing situations, when they ask them to stay back and block and pick up the blitz, Zeke's name will be one of the first ones you hear. I okay. still got game. All right, still got game. Let's move on. Uh, we talked about um, Richardson being named uh, the starter, so that's already been covered. Um, so apparently you didn't have too high of uh, an opinion of Ladanian Tomlinson as a as a, uh, a broadcaster there, um, but he's walking away. I don't know what he's going to do. He's talking about the next chapter of his life, but he's decided to retire from being an on-air football analyst. Seems to me that's a job that you can be in until you were 99 and a half years old and still exactly. do pretty much whatever else you wanted to do. So to retire from this makes no sense to me. What about you? Well, I don't know. I'll tell you the truth. When he first started in this job, they had him on particular shows, like, like pregame shows during the season, and they had him on during the week doing analysis and stuff like that. And he was real energetic, and he was really into it, and he had a lot of valuable things to say, especially about offenses and especially about running games. You know, he stuck to his expertise, which was great. But lately – I don't know, man. He looks like he's slowing down. It doesn't look like it's fun to him anymore. I've been watching. When I see him on TV, I listen to him. It just doesn't – he just, first, and he's never in the studio anymore. So there might be something going on at home that's taking him away from his duties. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He's always on, at a remote location. I assume it's at his house. He's never in the studio anymore, which he used to be in the studio. And he just doesn't seem like it's fun to him anymore. All right. Well, that's just well, my opinion, because I watch these guys and I have favorites and they're people that I listen to, uh, you know, loyally. And, and he's just he's just not fun to listen to anymore. Doesn't look like he's enjoying it. Interesting. Interesting. All right. We talked about uh, the rookies and how some of them played. You, um, as a matter of fact. Ben, let me see if I can bring this up here. Hold on a second. This is a, a, a Twitter feed um, giving some results for all the rookies, you know, what they did. Bryce Young, 67%, four for six, 21 yards, 72.2 passer rating. C.J. Stroud, 17.7 .7 passer rating, 13 yards, one interception. Anthony Richardson, 7 for 12, 58%, 67 yards, 1 INT, 39.2 passer rating. So these guys went through. It looks like the highest passer rating of all of the rookies here. Um, man, Dorian Thompson Robinson, 9 for 10, 90%, 102 <laughs> yards, 1 TD, a 142.5 passer rating. You gotta also, you know it. who else? Huh? I said you got to love it. They you know who like else a... looked really good? The young man that was playing against the Niners at quarterback for the Raiders. At, yeah, he, man, he was slinging the rock, man. Is he a rookie? I think I he's know. a rookie, I'm but I'm not sure what his name was. Because <laughs> they, they got uh, a, a veteran backup up there. I forget it, what his name is. But um, uh, this was a rookie, man. And, and it was in, in uh, 
high contrast to how Trey Lance was playing. You know, it was like everybody's questioning Trey Lance, and then this guy comes in for the Raiders, and he's firing things up. And they're like, oh, this other guy's looking great here as a rookie. So um, yeah. we'll have to keep an eye out on the Raiders and see what – And going the on. guy Thompson, uh, he wasn't a high draft pick. He, he was like – I hate to guess, but I think he was like a fifth or sixth round draft pick. I believe he's out of UCLA. Okay. Uh, which means he played for Chip Kelly. Uh, okay. 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 But uh yeah, he's he's I heard somebody else say he might be a guy to watch. And another guy that you might want to watch that plays for the Patriots is a guy, um, uh, Malik Cunningham. They picked him as a wide receiver, but he played some quarterback in high school and or college. And supposedly they were impressed with him throwing the ball. Really? Yeah. So we're going to have to do a little a little homework on Malik Cunningham from the Patriots. Okay. Okay. Malik Cunningham for the Patriots. All right. So, Benny, the young man that I was talking about, he actually is on this list. I just didn't recognize his name. He is Mr. Aiden O'Connell. Okay. He's with the Raiders. Look at this. 15 for 18. 83%. 141 yards, a touchdown, and a 117.8 passer rating for a rookie. <laughs> okay. He really came in looking good. I'm sitting there going, gee, me Christmas. Garoppolo better watch out. <laughs> so um, the rookies did perform pretty well. That, that's, that was some good stuff right there. He's a fourth-round pick. Fourth round. Yeah. Doesn't say what school he's from when I'm looking at, but so Brian Hoyer is there too. Yeah. So Brian Hoyer is going to be the backup. Brian oh, Hoyer, one of those high experience backups. Yes, he's a vet. He's backed up Brady. He's back. Him, Brady, and Garoppolo were all in New England together. So, so what I was going to say. So again, uh, the head coach there, McDaniel's, likes to bring in guys that have already played under his system. That's why he went and got Hoyer. All right. Ben and Barry, how about Jalen Hurts, Benny? Officially signs with the Jordan brand. Says, that's a hero of mine. One of the things we said, well, I don't know about that now. I th one of the things we said <laughs> when we were talking about Lamar and his, you know, not going with an agent versus Jalen and going with the agency that he was going with, is that we kind of expected that Jalen was going to get some serious high-level uh, um, sponsorships, you know, um, partnerships with, with some brands. And this looks to be one of those high-level brand connections. You That's know? one of the pluses of having a legitimate agent. Now, I'm not sure what, you know, I do know that it seems as if Lamar is pushing something called the complete gym where he rolled something out onto the field and started working out with it. But I don't know exactly who that, who that is. And I don't know, you know, about that gym, but um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Jalen hurts. Yeah. It, it's one of the things when you have that. So Ben, the NFL executives are hinting that these guardian caps could eventually be worn in games. Mm -hmm. You heard that too. What do you yes. think about that? I mean, they, well, they're ugly, but, <laughs> that's the first thing i i just don't want my game to go away you know if it, if it comes to that then it comes to that but and i'm sure they'll figure out a way to dress them up but i don't think that's going to happen anytime real soon yeah I, I don't think so either i was just i was even surprised that they that they brought that up you know yeah i mean they're they're making improvements to the real helmets every year and I, I've been the games I've looked at, I've noticed the helmets look a little different on the outside, which means to me that it's some newfangled helmet that probably has some new stuff on the inside also. Well, Betty, we're going to wrap it up here. We got to talk about Aaron Rodgers with an injury scare. Some guy hit the guy with the red shirt on. <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> that's been going injury. on at Cowboys camp 
That's been going on at Cowboys camp too. Really? Yeah. It, it, they're hitting the they they're hitting Dak. Yeah. Guess who? Who? Who's the best defensive player on that team? <laughs> He's in Dak. Yeah, Dak. He's in hot water. Coaches are like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> it happened at the Eagles. Well, the Browns were complaining because they're having practices with the Eagles, mm -hmm. joint practice with the Eagles. And they said the Eagles were trying to take cheap shots at Deshaun. Really? Yeah, this is going on all over the place. Cheap shots from the Eagles. Ooh. Eagle fans, I don't know. They might like it. I don't know. <laughs> of course they like it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, great. Fantastic. Their answer to that is, it's football. It's football. <laughs> That's their answer to everything. It's football. <laughs> all right, Benny. That's all I got, man. You got anything else? <laughs> no, nah, man, I'm good. It's oh, football. You know what? <laughs> yeah. Jalen Hurts, um, it, it sounds like he's got an actual apparel deal, not just the shoe deal. So he'll be wearing a lot of Jordan stuff. He'll he'll have the Jordan uh, bucket hat. He'll have the Jordan sweatsuits. And he'll obviously be wearing Jordan shoes. I don't be know, Benny. I don't know. I think that the Jordan brand might be the Jalen suits and the Jalen sneakers. He but doesn't it's have the a Jordan like brand on Jalen. No. Yeah, it's the Jordan brand on Jalen. That's what it Not is. On Jalen, of Jalen. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> Jalen Jalen doesn't have a logo. Jalen doesn't have a no. It's, the logo is not going to change. It's just I just think they're going to. I think Jalen. Oh, they're going to design a shoe just for him. Yeah, yeah. That's quite a possibility. Yeah, yeah. That's and, a possibility. And, and clothes. <laughs> That's a possibility. That's what I'm thinking. But but, but you got to remember now, Nike does that. Jordan usually doesn't do that. Jordan is Jordan. But you can get a Nike shoe for this player, Nike shoe for that player, Nike shoe. They've devoted different shoes to different players. They do it more in basketball than they do in football. But Jordan is usually Jordan. Like, you wear Jordans. And the Jordan 1, the Jordan 11, the Jordan – there's certain Jordan basketball shoes that have been made into cleats. But you don't see a lot of players wearing them. Mm. I know I've had a couple of guys on my team wear them, a couple of guys in our league, in our flag league wear them, and they didn't love them. No? <laughs> nope. Wow. Wow. They didn't love them. Back to Nike? They went right back to Nike, yep. <laughs> but we'll it. see. We shall see. We shall see. Well, look, if they put the ugly color Kelly Green on it, then they'll sell out. <laughs> that's, that's yeah. That's they'll a probably given. sell out. I will give this to the Eagle fans, though. When I looked at preseason games, no, excuse me. When I looked at preseason practices, the Eagles looked like they were selling out the field at practice. I'm sure. They're <laughs> hype. And why shouldn't they be? They were just in the Super Bowl. They lost the game they should have won. And the team is basically the same plus – and this Jalen Carter kid is wreaking havoc. <laughs> He's wreaking havoc. I'm All telling right. you, man, they should have they should have traded Fletcher Cox when they could have got something for him. <laughs> they should they should have been dumped that bum. He's he, they could have they could have got draft picks up the yin yang for him, for him if they traded him a year or two ago. All They'd right. be even better off, but. Well, Jalen, Jalen, he came right in and, and made an impact, no doubt about it. So we shall see how that all works out. Yep. All right, Benny. Muchas gracias. Okay. Peace out. Talk to you.